And a very warm welcome to our worship this morning as we prepare to begin by singing Our God, Our Help in Ages Past. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be God's kingdom, kingdom now and forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up. Let us pray. Almighty Thank God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from those no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, this is the great and first commandment and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy.
everlasting God. Before the earth was formed and even after it shall cease to be, you are God. Break into our short span of life and show us those things that are eternal, that we may serve your purpose in all we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading comes from Judges chapter 4, verses 1 to 10. The Israelites again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. So the Lord sold them into the hand of King Jabin of Canaan, who reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harasheth Hagoim. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. For he had 900 chariots of iron and had oppressed the Israelites cruelly for 20 years. At that time, Deborah, a prophetess, wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the country of Ephraim, and the Israelites came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, son of Abinoam from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, Go, take position at Mount Tabor, bringing 10,000 from the tribe of Naphtali and the tribe of Zebulun. I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the Wadi Kishon, with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah got up and went with Barak to Kadesh. Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and 10,000 warriors went up behind him, and Deborah went up with him. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We will pray Psalm 123 by alternate sides, beginning with this side. To you I lift up my eyes. You who are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their master, or the eye of a maid towards the hands of her mistress. So our eyes look to see the Lord our God, until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. For we have had our fill of derision. Our souls overflow with the mockery of those at ease and with the contempt of the proud. A reading from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say, there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. 
For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are doing. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, 
I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. May my mouth and our hearts be opened in the name of the living God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In a sermon a few years ago, His Holiness Pope Francis said that God is a God of surprises. That no matter what we think we know or have already heard, God is always new. Even when we hear the same passage of scripture we have heard dozens of times before, God will be new. And while we may think what we have heard is just an ancient text banging on about some war or other we know nothing about, God will surprise us. And while we may think what we have heard is yet another excerpt of yet another letter of Paul to some church or other, God will also surprise us. And the greatest surprise from our reading from Judges this morning is that we are hearing it at all, that we get to celebrate the incredibly powerful and compassionate figure of Deborah some 3,000 years after her life. The Jewish culture at the time of Deborah was intensely patriarchal. Women had few rights and were counted as little more than cattle. Sacred texts were written by men and for men. The divine was beginning to be seen in only masculine terms and feminine divine symbols were being actively destroyed. The male composers of the, and editors of the Old Testament, to quote my Old Testament lecturer, the Reverend Dr. Sue Bora, were simply not interested in women. And yet, here is Deborah. Somehow, despite this pressure, despite all these currents against women, she remains. And she does so because the mystery we know by the term God commissioned her so powerfully and so decisively that even the patriarchal forces arrayed against women and women's voices could not silence her completely. The male composers of scripture were compelled to recount her story. The male editors of scripture could not remove her completely. Deborah is the only female judge in the history of Israel, the judges being a leader of Israel before the monarchy were established. And this was at a time when women had virtually no civic rights at all. For her to have been recognized as a judge, the people in charge, the men in charge, must have seen in her something amazing, something that showed that she was embodying God, something surprising. And Deborah was also a military leader, a strategist that men, that armies would follow. 
Barak will only do what God has commanded him to do. What God has actually commanded him to do. He will only do it if Deborah goes with him. Verse 8. If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. The phrasing of the Hebrew original here has resonances with that from Exodus 33, where Moses requests God for God's presence to go with the people of Israel. Barak needs God's presence, embodied in Deborah, to be with him so he can carry out the work God has appointed him to do. Just as we all need the divine presence with us to carry out our work of becoming more and more the person God has called us to be. But God has even more of a surprise in store for Barak, more than being commanded by a female judge and a female military strategist. Verse 9, And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. This refers to Yael, who later in chapter 4 kills Sisera by her own hand, and also to Deborah herself for her strategy. So it is women directed by God, not men, who defeat the Canaanites. How surprising would that have been in a warrior, patriarchal culture? But the figure of Deborah is even more surprising. Our passage today is a retelling of the later prose rendition of the great song of Deborah in the next chapter of Judges. Deborah is a poet. And in the culture of the time, poets were associated with and held political power. So Deborah is not only a military strategist, not only a judge, she is also a political leader. And in this, she rivals one of the most well-known figures from the Old Testament, King David, who was also all three. But Deborah is also a prophetess. She speaks the word of God to the people of God. As military leader, as judge, as political leader, and as prophet, Deborah is unique within the entire Old Testament. And she would have been entirely surprising to the patriarchy of the day. It is no wonder that in Judaism she is known as the mother of Israel. Deborah's continuing importance, despite centuries of patriarchal opposition, shows us that God will persist, that God will surprise us and speak to us through women, through mothers, through girls, and through those people our culture may like to silence or ignore. Like the life that grows through the cracks in even the most perfect pavement as weeds, God will always make her presence felt in our lives. As soon as we accept that presence, we will, like Barak, respond and then do what God wishes us to do. Even if it is completely surprising to what we thought our life was about. And we do this not because we have been commanded by God, but because, like Barak, who was commanded by God, but ignored that command, we do it because, like Barak asking Deborah to go with him, we do it because God goes with us and we respond to her presence. And of course, as Christians, we affirm that God is one, that the God Paul writes about in his letter to the Thessalonians, is the same God of surprises that gifted the mother, Deborah, to Israel. In his letter, Paul urges the Thessalonians not to fall asleep, but to keep awake. 
because the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. This is similar to our reading from Matthew last week with the wise and the foolish bridesmaids waiting for the bridegroom to come, pointing out that we need to be constantly prepared. So far, so good, and pretty standard Christian doctrine applicable to our own lives, making sure we are ready for both the judgment of the world and our own individual death and judgment whichever comes first. But God is a God of surprises. And so we listen carefully. Verse 9. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. So that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. While Paul is urging us to stay awake, if we do fall asleep, we will still live with Christ. This is what the text is saying. This is the God of surprises. If we are not awake to Christ, if we are not awake to God, if we are not living a spiritual life, we will somehow, by God's grace, in the future life, live with Christ. What a surprise this is. What incredibly good news for ourselves, for our loved ones who did not know Christ, for the entire world. This surprising good news of life for all people awake or asleep is certainly not what we may have been taught and is certainly not what appears to be the message from other parts of scripture. And Paul himself seems to be giving different views in this one single passage. Yet this view of universal salvation was very widely held in the early church and is still very widely held in the Eastern church. The different messages in scripture means that it is not easy to engage with scripture. But as Christians, we are required to struggle with scripture, allowing God, the Holy Spirit, to help form our own personal understanding of God's word alongside our tradition, our reason, and our prayer life. One of the most influential and very orthodox Christian writers of the modern era, C.S. Lewis, struggled with these aspects of scripture and concluded, we know that no one can be saved except through Christ. We do not know that only those who know him can be saved through him. We know that no one can be saved except through Christ. We do not know that only those who know him can be saved through him. And so, like Barak, responding to the presence, not the command of God, we respond to God, not out of fear of God, not out of fear of hell, but because God has not destined us for wrath, but has destined us for love, for her universal love, her universal love for everyone, those who know her and those who do not know her, a love that means that we are all, as the text states, destined for salvation in the name of Christ. Let us affirm together the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, 
He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose in the queen in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified who has has not spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The response to our prayers today, when I say, giver of every gift we have, we respond, we give you thanks and praise. Giver of every gift we have, we We give give you thanks thanks and and praise. praise. Let us pray for the world and for the church. We pray for your world, for the destitute, the homeless, the dispossessed and the refugee for all who live in places of war or oppression. We give you thanks for those you are gifted with wisdom, those with a passion for justice, for peacemakers and environmentalists, for writers and artists, and for all who bring closer your reign of justice and peace. Help us to use our talents in your service giver of every gift we have, we give you thanks thanks and praise. We pray for your church, for the newly baptized and confirmed, for all teachers and ministers, for your churches in places of persecution or indifference. We give you thanks for those you have lifted for leadership, for able administrators and compassionate pastors, for prophets and poets, embroiderers and musicians, and for all who bring closer your reign of redemption and grace. Help us to use our talents in your service. Giver of every gift we have, we give you thanks thanks and praise. We pray for our community, for the unemployed, the marginalized, and all whose gifts are not valued, for our family, our friends, our neighbors, and ourselves. We give you thanks for those you have blessed with talents of friendship and hospitality, for those who nurture the young and care for the old, and for all who bring closer your reign of reconciliation and love. Help us to use our talents in your service. Giver of every gift we have, we We give give you thanks thanks and and praise. praise. We pray for all who are in need, for the fearful, for those who see no value or purpose in their lives for the sad and the lonely, the sick and the dying. We give you thanks for those with gifts of healing, for skilled counselors and steadfast companions, for those with talents of perseverance, humor, selflessness and courage, and for all who bring closer your reign of healing and wholeness. Help us to use our talents in your service, giver of every gift we have, we We give give you thanks thanks and and praise. We pray for your faithful servants of every age, for Mary of Nazareth and all the saints, for all who have used their talents in your service, bringing before you now particularly Brian Ellison, 
Jack Norris. K. Napier. David Clapham. And Sophie Osgood. Help us to follow their example that at our life's end we too may be judged your good and faithful servants and enter into the joy of our reward in your eternal presence. God, our creator, giver of every gift we have, we, we give, give you thanks and, and praise. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Amen. Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. To give our thanks and praise. All thanks and praise, glory and honour be yours at all times, in every place, holy and loving Father, true and living God. 
We praise you that through your eternal word you brought the universe into being and made us in your own image. You have given us this earth to care for and delight in, and with its bounty you preserve our life. We thank you that you bound yourself to the human race with the promises of a gracious covenant and called us to serve you in love and peace. Above all, we give you thanks for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Born as one of us, he lived our common life and often offered his life to you in perfect obedience and trust. By his death, he delivered us from sin, brought us new life, and reconciled us to you and to one another. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with the apostles and prophets, with holy women and men of every age, we proclaim your great and glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and this wine. And we pray that we who eat and drink them in obedience to our Saviour Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, may be partakers of his body and blood and be made one with him and with each other in peace and love. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, and again giving you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this wine his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. As we eat and drink this holy sacrament, renew us by your Spirit, that we may be united in the body of your Son and serve you as a royal priesthood in the joy of your eternal kingdom. Receive our praises, Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, 
For we all share in the one bread. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. This is the Lord's table. All who seek God's mercy are welcome. Please come. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, keep you in eternal life. This side drink on our behalf. stand to pray. A gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Please relax for the notices. Apologies for the blank screen. It's, it's not a minimalist joke. For those of you who are visitors today, normally I have a cartoon on there, but it escaped my notice this week, so I apologise. Okay, next. So, as we prepare to uh, say farewell with our uh, cupcake morning tea, the service ends with a, a dismissal of um, Peregrine, not that he's been sacked, <laughs> but that he's sent out. He's sent out in the power of the Holy Spirit to continue to heed God's call uh, and to be the person, as he's told us, that God is calling you to be. Mm. There, there's, a, um, it, it, there's, a, there's an old saying that if you're wondering what's on top of your priest's mind, uh, listen to how he starts his sermon. I suspect that this has been a, a wonderful and surprising experience for you. I hope so. Okay, enough of that. Uh, so, yes, over in church after. Jesse Tree. Welcome to our presentation of the Jesse Tree Advent Devotion. This is a way of journeying through Advent that traces the lineage of Jesus. 
It refers to an image in Isaiah 11 in which Jesus is compared to a shoot sprouting from the stump of the tree of his ancestor Jesse. It reminds us that the coming of Jesus was long prophesied and that in the stories of his ancestors we can hear echoes of his own life, death and resurrection. Each day of Advent there is a passage of scripture, its associated symbol, a reflection, a point of wonder and a prayer. These devotions were written by Grace Claus, Managing Editor of RCA Today. All scripture quotations are taken from the New Revised Standard Version. Each day of the St Barnabas Jesse Tree Advent Project is presented by parishioners of the Anglican Parish of Kalamunda. Our Jesse Tree is the wire model of our hospitable kingdom sculpture and the Christmas Tree Advent Calendar is sourced from our amazing op shop. Daily recordings of our Jesse Tree presentations will be posted on our website, Facebook page and YouTube channel. Simply look up Anglican Church of Kalamunda Jesse Tree. We hope these presentations will be a helpful companion as you prepare for Christmas. You are in our hearts. Peace be with you. We have 27 days in Advent this year. No, normal Advent calendars just count from December, but we're bound by our lectionary and we begin on the 29th of, um, that means 26, doesn't it? Yeah, anyway, regardless of that. But, so it's more than 24. We've got two of them done already, and uh, I'm pretty keen to have others done as well. So we, we started the ball rolling by, uh, on, on Wednesday night, by recording Layla, who will be doing the first one, and Margaret, who did the voiceover, uh, also have, was volunteered to do the next one. So we've got her, her recorded. What I'm wanting everyone to do is to put your hand up and we'll organise sessions where you come to church and then you just do the, do the reading. It, um, while Layla appeared on uh, camera, uh, shy adults are allowed not to be... Only, only your hand reaching in to pull and put things on will, is, is all that's required. Um, so there's, a, there's a, a, a sign up sheet at the back. There's a, a list of two more times this Tuesday and on Saturday again. Uh, if, if you're keen to do it but can't make those times, put your name in the top box. I know this is going to confuse everyone. The top box has already been. Write it on somewhere. And I'll make sure that we can we'll get we'll get you in our net. Okay. Next. So fourth of December is our uh, Christmas sundowner, and the the suggested food is mince pies, shortbread, gingerbread, and mini cheesecakes. Bring your own drink. It'll be uh, based here, so we'll be able to use all of the grounds, which means that we'll able to, able to spread out because it's only pubs that you don't have to worry about social distancing at the moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next. Anyone have any birthdays or anniversaries that we can celebrate? No. Um, before I continue, those of you from the 8 o'clock congregation in particular, but others may also remember Tina. Um, Tina's fairly frail at the moment and she's due to undergo some chemotherapy. Uh, she's come out of hospital, out of ICU, and is a firm believer in prayers and needs our prayers. So please uh, join in with me now as we pray for her, um, but also keep her in your minds and your hearts. Loving God, as we uh, think of Tina, we um, pray for your strength, for the work of your Holy Spirit, to hold her and to comfort her, to sustain her through this next part of her difficult journey. We 
pray for her immediate family there and for everyone who knows and loves her, that we may know your grace as she does. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Right, now, now, it's, now we're ready to chuck him out. No. <laughs> Excellent. There's, there's a couple of things that are going to happen here. First of all, um, it's, it's not exactly like getting unmarried, but I've got something to say, then he's got something to say, uh, and then there's a prayer, and then anyone who wants to come out and do the, the stuff that happens at ordinations, so if you can't actually touch the candidate's shoulder, you put your hand on someone else's shoulder, as we, we pray for him and him, Peregrine. I do, it's been a long time, but I do remember his name. <laughs> Okay. Peregrine, you've been a part of the parish as a candidate of formation for 10 months now. You've worshipped, studied, taught and served with us. You've been very generous in sharing your gifts and your journey with us. Your field committee, your supervisor and others have supported and challenged you in this placement. As you leave us, the Holy Spirit will continue to shape your life in readiness for the next stage of your vocation as a Christian leader, whatever form your vocation may take. And we thank you for your time among us, and we pray for you as you journey on, obedient to the call of Jesus Christ. I thank God and I thank you, my sisters and brothers, for all that we have done together during this placement. Thank you for your wisdom, your prayers, your companionship, and for everything I've learned among you. We will continue praying for you. Please continue praying for us. Let us pray. Holy God, by your grace, our relationships are changed, not ended, when we must say farewell to people who have travelled with us in hope and faith and love. Pour out your blessing on Peregrine as he leaves the parish today. May the fruit of his time with us grow and ripen for good service, for, for, good, for the good of the whole church and the world you have called us to serve through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you come round here, Peregrine. Everyone. Peregrine, go in faith, trusting that God will be faithful. Go in hope for all God's plans for us and for you. Go in love to your new ministries and your new people. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name name of Christ, Christ. Amen. amen. So if you'll drop your hands. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the the Son, Son, and the Holy Holy Spirit Spirit. be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the the name name of Christ. Christ.